So in this video, we're going to talk about how to describe the domain and range of functions using inequalities. So remember that the set of all inputs or x values in a relation is called the domain. The set of all outputs or y values in a relation is called the range. So there are two different types of functions. We have discrete functions, which kind of look like dots, right? Because discrete functions only include specific values, so the graph will look like dots on the coordinate plane. So that's why when you describe the domain and range of a discrete function, you're going to use lists, because you're just going to list out all the values that are included. A continuous function is all connected. Um, remember that one definition of a continuous function is that you can draw it without ever having to lift up your pen, right? So that's a continuous function. It's all connected. And so it includes a whole set of values. So that's why we have to describe the domain and range using inequalities. And that's what we're going to be reviewing today, is describing the domain and range of continuous functions. So remember that the domain can tell us whether a relation is a function. Remember that a function is a relation in which each input or x value corresponds to a unique output or y value. Remember that in a function, the x values do not repeat. So remember, the way to figure this out when you're looking at a graph is to think of the vertical line test. If any vertical line passes through a graph more than once, then it is not a function. So you can see in this example, this vertical line passes through this graph more than once. So it fails the vertical line test, which means it's not a function. You can see here, it doesn't matter how many vertical lines I draw, they're only going to pass through this graph once. So that means that it is a function. So think about it. The vertical line test is really another way of saying, look for repeated x values, right? Because if you have a repeated x value, your vertical line is going to pass through more than one point. You can see that these two points right here will have the same x coordinate. So the vertical line test really is just another way of saying, look for the repeated x. So what we need to do is talk about how to describe the domain and range. And the reason we do this is because we're telling someone where our function is located on the coordinate grid. So we're going to say these x values are included in this graph, and these y values are included in this graph. So you can see here I'm describing this function in green. And so what I've done is I've kind of mapped out the x values that are included and the y values that are included. So the x values go from negative 2 to 2. Um, remember that the filled-in circle corresponds to a value that's included. The open circle corresponds to a value that is not included. So when I write this, I would write negative 2 is less than or equal to x, less than 2, right? The inequality signs reflect the included or not included part. The y values go from negative 4 to 4. So I would say the range goes is negative 4, less than or equal to y, less than 4, right? Once again, the negative 4 is included because of the filled-in circle, and the positive 4 is not included because of the open circle. So my strategy for doing these problems is to go ahead and draw a box around the given function. Okay, so what I do is I start off with the domain, and then I draw two lines, right? I draw one at the smallest x value, and then I draw one at the largest x value, okay? And that tells me, like, the boundaries of x. And then for the range, I draw a line at the smallest y value and the largest y value. Okay, so that gives me boundaries for y. So those four lines together should put a box around my function that kind of contains all the points in my function in it, right? So uh, I don't care about what my function is actually doing within that region. I just only care about these endpoints when I'm describing the domain and range. So let's start off with some examples. So let's try describing the domain and range of this function, okay? So I'm going to use that method that I just told you. I'm going to start off by drawing a line at the lowest x value, okay? Or you can think about this at the leftmost point, okay? You can see that that is going to be here at negative 1. And then I draw a line at my largest x value, and that's going to be here at 5, okay? And then notice what kind of circles correspond. So at negative 1, I have an open circle. And then at 5, I have that filled-in circle. Okay, so my domain is going to go from negative 1 because I always go left to right when I'm describing domain. So I do negative 1 less than, okay, because if it's not included, I need the less than sign. And then I do x, right, because I'm talking about domain. And then the 5 is going to be included. So I'm going to do less than or equal to 5. So if you describe your domain like this, going from left to right, these are going to be your inequality signs, okay? You're always going to use the less than signs, and then you just have to think about whether it's included or not. So now let's describe the range. 
Okay, so the range is gonna go bottom to top, right? So I'm gonna draw this line here because this is the bottom value on my function. Um, and then here, I'm gonna draw in this line because that is my top value. So notice that that top upper value is four. And this value right here, well, it's on the x-axis, right? The x-axis, remember, is basically y equals zero. So my range is gonna go from zero and I have a filled in circle there, so I have less than or equal to. Since I'm talking about range, I'm talking about y. And then my upper value, the top value is gonna be four, so that's gonna be less than four. Okay, and that's how you would describe the domain range of this function. So how you can check that you've drawn these lines correctly is you can see that now we have this box that contains every single value in our function, right? So make sure that your function is contained within that box that you draw. All right, now let's try describing the domain and range of this function. So once again, I'm gonna do left to right for my domain, right? So here is my leftmost boundary, and then here is my rightmost boundary. So I know I have a filled in circle at negative four and another filled in circle at four. So my domain is gonna go negative four, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to four. Okay, now let's do the range. So we're gonna go bottom to top, or you know, you can think low to high. So here is the bottom of this function, right? And then the top of this function is actually right here. And I know this can get a little tricky with quadratics because you may be wondering, well, it goes up and then it turns and it comes back down, right? But we don't care about that part, right? Remember within this box, this function can be doing whatever it wants. We only care where's the lowest point and where's the highest point. That's all that matters for us. Okay, so the range, the lowest value is here at negative five and that is a filled in circle, right? There's actually two filled in circles, so it's gonna be included. So we have negative five less than or equal to y. And then this uh, value at negative one, it's gonna be a filled in circle because um, I know it's just like the curve passing through, but as long as there's no hole there, it's gonna be included, okay? So that's basically our criteria for a filled in circle. If it's not an open circle, if we have a straight curve, a line, anything that passes through like that, it's gonna be included. So it's gonna be less than or equal to negative one. So that's the domain and range of this function. So now you can go ahead and pause the video and try describing the domain and range of this function on your own. All right, so you can see this one goes from negative five to five in X, and we have an open circle here and another open circle here. So it's gonna be negative five less than X, less than five. Um, the y values go from negative two with another open circle to positive two with another open circle. So we have negative two less than y less than two. So now let's try describing the domain and range of this function. So notice this function, it's a little bit different, right? Because it doesn't have two endpoints, right? We have an endpoint here and we have an arrow here. Well, the arrow means that your graph continues forever. Okay, so what that means is like it has a left boundary of x, right? Because we can figure out that left boundary if we draw in our boundary line. Um, that is at negative four and we have a filled in circle there. But then when we go to do the right boundary, um, don't let this confuse you. So just because the arrows here doesn't mean that's where your graph stops, right? Because the arrow is actually telling me that's just what this picture looks like, but the graph actually goes on forever. So if it goes on forever in the positive direction, Remember, that's basically heading to positive infinity for x. So we would actually describe the domain as going from negative four, and then that's less than or equal to x, and then we would say less than infinity, okay? Because the really the right boundary is actually infinity. It's going on forever to the right. Um, whenever we talk about infinity, we use the less than sign because infinity is not a specific number, okay? Infinity is more of like an idea so we can't include it because we're not saying the graph stops at infinity. Infinity is not like a specific stopping point. So we have to write less than. All right, now let's think about the range. So the range, the lowest point is gonna be here at negative five. And you can see we have a filled in circle there. So my uh, bottom boundary is gonna be negative five and we have less than or equal to y. But then what about the upper boundary? Well, it's also going up in the positive direction, right? So we would also say the upper boundary of the range is positive infinity. So we would say less than infinity. Another thing you can do is you can write these just um, in the conventional way we would talk about domain and range, right? Because if somebody's looking at this graph, well, they say, well, all the x values are just gonna be all the values bigger than negative four. 
right? So you could also write this as x is greater than or equal to negative 4. You don't have to write it with the infinity. Um, you could also say the y values, well, that's just going to be all y values bigger than negative 5, right? So we could also just say y is greater than or equal to negative 5, okay? So either answer is correct. So let's try now describing the domain and range of this function. Okay, so we have a left boundary for x, but once again, it's going on forever to the right, right? We have this arrow, so it's gonna to go to the right. Um, so it's actually gonna to head to positive infinity for x, right? Because the x is going right. So we would say at negative four, we have an open circle. So negative four, less than x, and then less than positive infinity. I know that's a little confusing because the graph is going down, but remember, up or down doesn't matter when we're talking about domain. Domain is only left to right. Um, and then what about the range? The range, it starts off, let's see, the lowest value, well, we don't know the lowest value, right? Because it's going down. So it's actually headed down to negative infinity, so the lower boundary of the range is actually negative infinity. Okay, remember, we can't include infinity, so that's going to be y. And then let's think about the upper boundary. So we only care where the top of this function is, right? Well, the highest point on this function is actually right here, okay? I know it's a little confusing because we have this point here, but then notice that this graph goes a little bit above that point. So four is gonna be our upper boundary, and then um, there's no hole there, so that's gonna be included, right? Because the curve just passes through. So we would say less than or equal to four. All right, so now you can go ahead and pause the video and try describing the domain and range of this function on your own. So for this function, we're going to say that the domain, um, notice the x values start off at negative 6, and that is an included point, so it's negative 6, and then it heads to the right, so we're going to say positive infinity. Um, you can also write that as x is greater than or equal to negative 6. For the y values, notice that the lowest y value is going to be down here, um, at negative infinity, and then it goes up to positive 4, right? And that positive 4 is an included point. So we'd say negative infinity less than y less than or equal to 4. You can also write that as y is less than or equal to 4. So now let's try describing the domain and range of this function. Well, notice this is a line, and notice that it has an arrow at both endpoints. So if we're thinking about the x values, well, it's going to go on forever to the right to positive infinity, right? And it's going to go forever to the left for negative infinity. So I know you guys are probably used to saying all real numbers, which is correct. Um, you could say all real numbers, and there's actually a little bit of different notation we're going to learn how to describe um, all real numbers in a little bit later lesson. Um, but when we're talking about inequalities, you can just write this as negative infinity less than x less than infinity, right? Because x is going to be the entire number line. Well, what about the range? Well, notice that in the up and down direction, it's going to go down forever to negative infinity, and it's going to go up forever to positive infinity, okay? So it's going to be the same thing. It's, again, all real numbers, so we'd say negative infinity less than y less than infinity. So what about this function? Here we have an exponential function. So notice that the domain, okay, if we're going left or right, well, it's going to go to the right forever, so we have positive infinity and it's going to go to the left forever, so we have negative infinity. So the domain is going to be negative infinity less than x less than positive infinity. Well, what about the range? Well, notice that it's not going down forever, right? Because if we look at y, well, it's not including all these values right here. And also, we know that, you know, back from what you learned in Algebra 1, um, that exponential functions have an asymptote, right? So remember that it's going to get really, really close to some y value, but not actually equal it. And notice that in this case, that y value is 0. Okay, so this graph is going to get really, really close to 0, but it's not actually going to include it. So we're going to say 0 is less than y. But then in the upper direction, it keeps going forever, right? It keeps going up to positive infinity. So we'd say 0 less than y less than infinity. Okay, and that's how you describe the domain and range of an exponential function. So now you can pause the video and try describing the domain and range of this parabola on your own. Okay, so if you remember back from Algebra 1, um, remember that parabolas, the x values go on forever, right? 
So the x values are going to head to positive infinity, and they are also going to go to negative infinity. So we would say the domain is negative infinity less than x less than infinity. So remember, the y values have a starting point, right? So these y values are going to start right here at 1, and that point is going to be included, but then they go up forever in the positive direction. So we would say y is um, going from 1 to positive infinity, okay? Or you can also say that y is greater than or equal to 1. 